Hello everyone, and welcome back to Brick Country. Mason here. Today, I'm finally able to get started on a long-awaited project of mine. I've been wanting to get into mock work on my own table for a long time now, my medieval table. And recently, I found the time to really just put in some work and clear the whole thing off of clutter. And for the time being, I did sets. And I have put some base plates down and several sets and mocks up to try to get an idea of where everything's gonna go. And today in this video, I wanna show you guys what I'm thinking right now for the current layout of the medieval table. Let's check it out. So for those of you who don't know what my medieval table is, you see we have the main Lego city and Ninjago city right over here. And then in the middle of the room, we have my table. Now, my brother has a table over there, which he's been working on and is trying to get some ideas right now for his space layout. So stay tuned for some more shorts about that project. But my medieval table has been very cluttered and very busy for a long time. And it's finally starting to look like something could actually look cool here instead of just like a pile and a mess. So I am very excited to show you guys the overall idea. Now, the whole area is not base plated yet. We still have some half base plates to go here, as well as finishing out this row here, and then some base plates to go on under Rivendell over here. I believe it's five total, four over here, and one in the back corner where those pad boxes are. And then as for this one hole here, I'm using one of the, uh, I believe it's 32 by 32, or sorry, 16 by 16 base plates. Yeah, I had to figure that out real quick. Um, right here, because I'm leaving this gap here, I'll probably do some plates over it because this bolt holding in the table legs comes out just a little bit out of the actual table. You can see it's just a little bit, enough to where a base plate can't slide over it. So my plan is to leave that gap here, continuing with base plating everything else. And then I will build some plate work to go over the gap. And I think it'll still look pretty good. Now, you'll notice there's a little bit of Mills section here and here from previous projects. And that's because they're some of the only other base plates I had available. So I took them and I'm planning on scrapping those projects entirely here and here. This was a part of an old, uh, uh, what is it? The Gollum scene, the riddles for the ring mock I was working on. And I don't even know what that was for, but I'm gonna finish scrapping those before I start laying groundwork for the rest of the table. Let's start off in the Western regions of my table. We have Rivendell right over here. And I think it's gonna look really good. You'll notice that throughout the table, I have some dark blue uh, three by three plates. And those, I'm just kind of tracing out ideas for river. So I'm planning on raising the whole thing up about a uh, merp height or a medium rock plate height. And that's probably about the same as these markers for Orthanc. So probably about this high, just a little bit. Enough to finish out the waterfall here. And then I want the river to come immediately turn and kind of trickle in front of Rivendell. And once it's raised, I want to add maybe another structure down here for Rivendell, maybe another bridge, the entrance to Rivendell, where uh, the Fellowship first leaves and Frodo asks Gandalf, which way to Mordor, Gandalf? So maybe add that scene here. If not that, I'll probably just add a few more trees in this general area. And I think it'll look really good. Now for the back corner, I'm thinking of a little bit of Fangorn Forest. Now, for you guys in the comment section, let me know that everything is, you know, not where it's supposed to be in Lord of the Rings lore. I know I'm working with what I have and I have a tree beard figure and I really want to include him. So I'm planning on this back corner right by Orthanc being Fangorn Forest. And then obviously having Orthanc right here, spanning over for base plates and I'll finish out the wall. And I want to do it right before he starts burning up the trees in there. So I wanna have orcs and all that kind of going on, but I want them to be actively chopping down trees. So I'm planning on using some olive colors and making it look like it's still lush. And I think that'll be really cool contrasting with Baradur over here. I think that'll be a very nice contrast between the two towers, one all fiery and one with more life and vegetation. Now, when you first walk into the room, this bill will be front and center. Now, this one is not Lord of the Rings based. It is gonna be something custom. It is the black 
falcons and I really want to build them a fortress. Now, you've seen the video where I built these and I recently came up with this pretty cool tower design. It has an armory up in the top if I remove the roof real quick. You see there's a weapon rack and a knight right in there. And I'm planning on including all of these builds or as many as I can at least of the Black Falcon builds uh, in the overall fortress. The ones that I can't include will go, these they will go back on the shelf with like the medieval blacksmith shop and sets like that. And I'm getting the Brinklink designer uh, Black Falcon Fortress set. I ordered that on its pre-order. So it will be coming within the next few months and or at least shipping. I don't know when it's actually coming, you know. Um, but I want that to be the inner keep and then I want to have an outer wall, this gatehouse being a part of it. I may have to modify it and make the gate a little wider. I think that could be cool. But and then, or, and then having this coming up over as well. And then I think that'll look really good having Black Falcon Forge right here. I also want to raise them up on a little bit of a mountain because it's all snowy and I love that biome for the Black Falcons. So I want to have it snowy up there and maybe a trench or a moat here. I haven't quite decided if I want a trench or moat or just flat ground. So let me know in the comment section if you think there should be a moat or something or renovate the gatehouse to where it's actually a gate instead of a drawbridge. Because I like both ideas. I don't know yet which one I'm leaning more towards. So let me know in the comment section. Over to the west, we have Erebor and Baradur. So both of these are really, really cool. They're probably some of my favorite builds in my layout as of right now. Baradur, you know, was recently released and I have it already installed. I actually took my previous design for my uh, Isengard plate. You can see there's even one of the fissures I had built back here. And there's actually another one underneath this, but it's covered up, so I don't really mind. It's also a small one. So I took the plate from that to go ahead and start working on Baradur because I decided it'd be really cool to do a lush one, as I was saying earlier, for Orthanc. So I decided to go ahead and use what I had for Baradur, and I'm working on renovating it now. Got some progress on a mountain wall here, and I really want to make it a little taller and detail it more. And I want to add a bunch of orcs on the outside with this pretty cool tint design I came up with. It's some different types of bricks, profile bricks some one by four plates. And then on the inside, there are these uh, hinge elements or angled plates. I don't know their technical name, but I use a good few of those to help with the angle. And I think it looks pretty good, especially when you set it down with a camp of orcs. And these are just basic Gundabad orcs. And I use the extra helmets from Orthanc or from Baradur on them. And I think they look really, really good. I want to try to see if I can get some more of just the helmet packs. There's one of each type on these two orcs, the lighter one as well as the heavier one. I also copied the hot dog stick design from Baradur and put this orc in front of a little campfire. So I want to build a few more tents and get some more orcs for this area and kind of texture this whole area. This side build for Baradur will probably go on the shelf somewhere as it looks really cool, but it doesn't quite fit in here because I won't be able to include Mount Doom, obviously, because Mount Doom would be way in the distance behind Baradur, and obviously the edge of the table is here. I don't quite have enough room for uh, Mount Doom over here. Beside Baradur, we have Erebor, and I really like how this project is coming. If you've seen some of my shorts, you know I've been trying to get this project done. And there should be another short coming out really soon about more of the details. It'll zoom in a little closer. But I really like how this project is coming. You can see I've done some more water work here with some cheese wedges to give a nice effect. But this was before I knew Baradur was going to go here. So I'm probably going to be renovating the river here to do a turn along the edge and wind up to the edge of the table over there. And I think that'll look really good. Now, I have a few orcs out here for now, but I love how this ground texture is coming. I added some gold and different cheese wedges, colored cheese wedges mixed in. I think it looks really good. We have several broken and ruined statues and my dwarf statues, which I really like the chain beard on. And moving along to the interior, I've got some, some, some progress going on in here. So the interior of the broken wall where uh, Biffer or sorry, Bofer and Bilbo have their conversation right before Bilbo hurries over the wall to deliver the Arkenstone. And then we have 
a little section up here, a little platform. Under that, we have an armory fully loaded of weapons of old. There's Nori right here. Around the corner, we have an entrance going further into the mountain. A really cool statue. I know it's like Samurai Ninjago elements, but that's the only golden elements I had to make a golden statue for now. I'd love to make a dwarven statue later on. And he's got a really cool podium. I think it turned out really good with these flowing elven all those pieces of gold. We have Bomber right over here. And then the throne over here. Some nice chests, Thor and Oka Shield and Dwalin having the conversation right here. And I really like how the throne turned out with the shield tile. I think it's framed in nicely. And I love the, uh, what is it, earth or sand, yeah, sand green all in this build. Took a lot of inspiration from the original Lonely Mountain set. And I think it looks really, really good mixed in with the gray. Also some different shades of brown to show its age, as well as the tile work with the sand blue. And all around, I'm really liking how Erebor is coming together. And it'll look really cool when the mountain itself on the outside is finished, having a big mountain looming in the distance with the entrance to the Dwarven world right in front. Now you're probably wondering what this big front area is for. I've had a idea, I don't know if I'm in love with it yet, but the idea as of right now is, if you can see where these trees are, these little saplings, picture that as a line, okay? This is the forest area. We have a big forest right here, and that is going to be the Mirkwood. Now about here, where this missing 16 by 16 plate is, I would love to have a little bit of the fortress of Dol Guldor. Having Dol Guldor stretch over this 16 by 16 to help cover it up, maybe a half circle section of it, I think that would look really good. And then near this river, I wanna have a little bit of the elven realm, the woodland realm, and have the barrel scene represented going down this river to Erebor. Now, I know that's bypassing Lake Town and the city of Dale, but I still think it'd be cool to have the Elven Kingdom here and Dol Guldor here to represent some more really cool, iconic Lord of the Rings and Hobbit scenes. But I don't know if I like the idea of a forest being here because it may block the view of the Black Falcon Fortress. So I'll probably have to raise the Black Falcon Fortress up a good bit as a more of a mountain, like I was saying earlier. And if I can raise that up successfully, I think it would be a really good idea to have the forest here. If I can't raise that up as high as I want, I'll probably just add some few loose dead trees around here and I'll come up with something new for this area. But as of right now, the plan of course is to have Mirkwood here, Black Falcon Fortress there, uh, Baradur and Erebor over here, the forest of Fangorn in the back, and Rivendell and Orthanc side by side here. And I think with all these sets together and all these scenes, it's gonna look really, really cool. To help you guys picture it a little better, I threw up one of my uh, Dogledore sets over here, the Witch King final battle to mark that spot, and King Thranduil on a reindeer right over here to mark the Woodland Realm spot. And I am very, very excited to get started on this project. One last thing I need to talk about is over here is the connection between this and the rest of the world because obviously Mordor is in his almost own valley and it has the black gates in front of it. But my plan, I'd love to exchange this wall of Murps or yeah, the rock pieces and have it come almost parallel to the river for a little bit all the way down to here. Only instead of following it here, I would have it come in a straight line when it reaches about the black brick here and run a straight line down and include either the set or custom of the black gates in smaller form right here. And I think that would look really good. And I also want to have a pathway leading from somewhere around Fangorn or Rivendell and kind of winding through the whole place, connecting all the places, Black Falcon Fortress, Isengard, going all the way to Erebor, and even maybe a little bridge crossing the river to reach Baradur. And I think it'd be really cool just to have a path connecting everything. And as of right now, I have an under table area. Right now it's dedicated to storage, but maybe one day it will be a display of some sort. We have some of my various mock projects, including Osgiliath, Bag End, and Mines of Moria, even a Star Wars project that I haven't gotten a lot of progress on yet, and several sets and modified sets. We have the Spider Attack set right over here. The dwarves are actually in my display case. Well, most of them anyway. Obviously you've seen a lot of them are in Erebor right now. But we also have the Shelob Attack set, the Lake Town set, 
as well as my custom Helm's Deep base and extension point. This is just all additions to the original set to make it bigger and better. I'll probably do a full video about that in the future. Someone in the comment section, let me know if you guys would like to see a full video about this. But yeah, this is my raised up Helm's Deep. And see that little Lego bag up back there? That's where I'm storing for now my Fell Beast promo until I decide if I wanna open it, integrate it in my builds, or do I leave it sealed in the collection? Because I'm currently trying to collect all Lego Lord of the Rings sets. So I don't know, I'm definitely not getting rid of it, but I don't know if I wanna open it yet. So still debating about that, so it's under here for now. But this is where I'm storing most of my projects and Lord of the Rings sets, unless they can be integrated up here, hopefully sometime in the future. Well, there you go. This has been my tour of my Lego Medieval table, and I'm very, very excited to get started. But that's not the last thing we have to talk about today. I got big news, you guys. This Friday, I am going to be getting on a plane to Chicago because this Saturday is Brickworld Chicago and I am going for the first time and I am just so excited. It's going to be amazing. And one of my favorite parts about the last convention I went to, which was Atlanta BrickCon of this year, was the trading. I was able to just take some minifigs and trade for minifigs I wanted instead of the figures that obviously I didn't want because I traded. So. My plan is actually to bring some more figures to Chicago. Taking a look at my very fancy Lego Chima minifigure case right over here. We have a good variety of figures, I think. We have some older Star Wars over here with the Snow Trooper, Darth Vader, and an old printed Han Solo brick. And then a nice variety of various figures here with some Harry Potter, Lego Movie, Angry Birds, Ninja Turtles, CMS, and even a Nexo Knights figure over here. And then along the top, we have some various superhero figures, even this Pharaoh, which I kind of like. He comes with this printed Lego Batman uh, minifigure st display kit stand because he came in the Lego Batman CMF line. And my plan is to be trading all these figures. I may add a few more to the lot. I don't quite know yet, but if you're interested in any of these figures and you're going to Brickworld Chicago too, be sure to look for me because I'd be more than happy to see what you have and consider trading with you. So yeah, I'm very excited for Brickworld Chicago and I hope to see some of you guys there. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and comment below what you think of my layout choices for my medieval table. If you enjoyed this video, check out some other videos on the end screen now and I'll see you guys later. Farewell.